Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? Adjuvants and a job coming to you guys here today with another product opening. So today we have in a fat pack of Return to Ravnica. So we are going to be opening this on up here today. Uh, it comes with nine booster packs, a spin down die, a couple of inserts for how to play Magic the Gathering. Uh, also a book where you have a checklist of all the cards in Return to Ravnica and the box itself uh, that this package comes with. So we're going to open this on up and see what all we have inside and open up our boosters and see if we get anything that's pretty nice, any mythics or anything big. So uh, I already started into it on one of these sides. That way I would have an easier time with actually taking off this wrap. There we go. So, we're going to slide this off. And we're going to take a look at this because these actually unfold into little posters for you guys that don't know. So, on the inside, it has some adhesive strip. And I just try to casually and non aggressively pull this apart. There we go. All right, so this is a panoramic kind of one. Usually some of them will be a uh, going along uh, the other side. Will be going up and down instead of side to side, but this one's definitely really nice. I like the panoramic view of Ravnica. Definitely really awesome. So we're gonna put this off to the side. For those of you guys that purchase a fat pack, you can stick that up on a wall. Uh, we have the player's guide for Return to Ravnica, like I mentioned before. So in here, it goes over some of the cool cards that are in Return to Ravnica and the guilds themselves. And then it has all the cards that are in this set. And then at the end, there is a checklist of the cards. That way, you guys can keep track of what you have and uh, if you're trying to collect all the cards in the set. So again, we're going to put that off to the side. We have some cardboard, and we have our box here, so we're going to open this up, take out the rest of the cardboard. Uh, we also have deck boxes, so we have two of these deck boxes. This one is with Jace, and this one is with Niv-Mizzet. Now, these are going to be able to hold your cards that are unsleeved, so if you guys have sleeved cards, unfortunately, they will not fit in these boxes, but... Uh, otherwise, for newer players and players that don't have sleeves and don't really care about it, these boxes are a pretty nice way to store your cards and they will fit back into uh, this box itself. So, I'm uh, going to put that off and we have our packs here and we also get some lands as well. So, we have a block of lands and some packs and our spin down die and we're going to close up this box and take a look at how awesome it looks. So. There's Jason Nivmizit, and on the sides it says Return to Ravnica, and then Jace and Nivmizit on the other side. So pretty nice overall. I like these boxes. I like the uh, Deck Builders Toolkit boxes the most for storing cards, but this one is a close second. Uh, they're still really nice to hold uh, around like 500, I would I would imagine, cards, somewhere around there, but... Uh, they do a pretty good job of being able to store your stuff and safely as well. All right, so we're going to try to tap into this and see what all we get out of these packs. All right, so our lands. And we have our spin down. And more packs. Alright, so taking a look at this spin down first as the uh, the return to Ravnica symbol. And it has all of the numbers. Now I'm not entirely sure if all of them are the same color because they tend wizards tends to do things differently and mix it up. Uh, I'm not sure if all of them come with a blue die and red numbers or if they're different, but 
Uh, this one's obviously blue with the red numbers. Alright, so we have our packs here. Let's go through the, the lands real quick. And I do actually like the lands. I, I really do like the artwork for them. We'll just kind of casually skim through them real quick. Ravnica was one of my favorite sets. Uh, well, blocks, should I say. Uh, as far as artwork, artwork goes, so... I'm always happy to uh, to have them revisit that plane and do some new artwork as well as revisit old artwork like the uh, the planes that they have uh, with this artwork. Absolutely stunning. So those are the lands that we get. And now we are going to crack into these packs. So starting off with the first one. So we have a Chorus of Might, Electricery, Paralyzing Grasp, Augur Spree, a Common Bond, Explosive Impact, Mind Rot, Axe Bane Guardian, Keening Apparition, Viachino Racketeer, Minotaur Aggressor, Hellhole Flailer, Nivix Guild Mage, our rare is Mizium Mortars, so one generic, one red deals four damage to target creature we don't control. And it has an overload cost of three generic and triple red. Pretty awesome card. And then we have a tip card and we have an island. So we'll put those up here. And I forgot to mention, if you guys are interested in purchasing fat packs, there's a link down in the description below where you can find them for sale. They are always in stock on abugames.com. We have Trained Carkle, Survey the Wreckage, Aerial Predation, Spawn of Rix Madi, Vassal Soul, Void Wielder, Gate Creeper Vine, Viachino Racketeer, Cremate. Selesnia Sentry, Aukus Steed, Golgari Kirun, Tablet of the Guilds, and our rare, which is actually a mythic rare, is Niv Mizzet Draco Genius, which is pretty awesome. So he's a 5-5 five, five for 6, 2 generic, double blue, double red, flying, and whenever he deals damage to a player, we can draw a card. And for blue and red, he deals one damage to target creature or player. Niv Mizzet is definitely a really huge powerhouse, powerhouse card. I absolutely love him in both limited and constructed. And then we have a tip card, and we have another land, another planes. Alright, so... We have Golgari Guildgate, Cancel, Swift Justice, Search Warrant, Augur Spree, Cremate, Batterhorn, Inaction Injunction, Drudge Beetle, Rakdos Guildgate, Gutter Snipe, Selesnya Charm, always awesome. V2 Gazi Guild Mage, very awesome and limited. And we have yet another Mythic, Epic Experiment, another uh, Is It Mythic. So it's X and one blue and one red. Exile the top X amount of cards from your library. For each instant and sorcery card with converted mana cost X or less among them, you may cast those cards without paying its mana cost. Then put all cards exiled this way that weren't cast into your graveyard. A very fun card to play around, uh, especially whenever it comes into Kitchen Table Magic. It's just a really fun card when you're able to play, 
you're able to pay like five, six mana into Epic Experiment and dig into your deck a little bit and play all of those awesome burn spells. Uh, then we have a bird and we have another land. We have our insert of how to play magic, which I forgot to take out. We have Swift Justice, Electricery, Essence Backlash, Centaur Healer, Is It Guildgate, Dagger Drome Imp, Isperia Skywatch, Lobber Crew, Concordia Pegasus, Destroy the Evidence, Civic Saber, Rakdos Charm, Rakdos Rage Mud, and our rare is Wayfaring Temples, so it's a three cost creature, one generic, one green, one white, and its power and toughness are equal to the amount of creatures you control. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you get to populate which is definitely very interesting. A very fun card to have in token-based decks. And we have a Centaur token and a Island. All right, about halfway through. All right, so we have Survey the Wreckage, Axe Bane Stag, Deviant Glee, Avenging Arrow, Chemister's Trick, Cursor's Accord, Towering Indrick, Runewing, Sunspire Griffin, Perilous Shadow, Fairy Imposter, Call of the Conclave, Slime Molding, and we have Righteous Authority as our rare, so it's a 5 cost and enchantment, 3 generic, 1 white, 1 blue. Enchant creature, an enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each card in its controller's hand. And at the beginning of your draw step of the uh, of enchanted creature's controller, should I say, uh, that player draws an additional card. Uh, excuse my poor wording, because I like to read what isn't there. Uh, but Righteous Authority lets you draw more cards, and it buffs up a creature really, really tremendous um, in limited, and it's a really fun card to play in casual. And then we have an ooze token and a island. Sometimes I just read what I what I want to read. All right, so another pack here. We have drainpipe vermin, swift justice, horn callers chant, cancel. Vassal Soul, Sundering Growth, Towering Indrick, Stealer of Secrets, Grim Rustabout, Minotaur Aggressor, Street Spasm, Rakdos Ringleader, and our rare is Carnival Hellsteed, so 5, 4 for 6, 4 generic, 1 black, 1 red. First Strike, Haste, and Unleash, really huge card. Just absolutely tremendous, considering it can be a 6-5 for 6 with First Strike and Haste. Really awesome. And we have a Saproling, we have a Forest, and we also have a Foil Counterflux. A nice Foil Rare, so double blue when one red can't be countered by spells or abilities, and counter target spell you don't control, and an overload cost for one generic, double blue, and red. Really, really cool. like that very much. So... Just a couple more packs left. Three to be exact. Alright, so let's see here. We have Bellows Lizard, Dispel, Horncaller's Chance, Pursuit of Flight, Golgori Longlegs, Essence Backlash, Tower Drake, Knightly Valor, Annihilating Fire, Stab Wound, which I really love, Is It Key Rune, Azorius Justiciar, Judge's Familiar, 
and we have a temple garden so we have a shock land here so taps for either green or white to our mana pool and whenever it enters the battlefield we may pay two life and if you don't it enters the battlefield tapped so temple gardens really awesome all the shock lands are really nice uh, and then we have a centaur and a mountain There we go. All right, so we have Chorus of Might, Eyes in the Sky, Augur Spree, Cobble Brute, Is a Guild Gate, Keating Apparition, Ogre Jailbreaker, Hesperia Skywatch, Rubbleback Rhino, Arc Weaver, Rick's Mod D Guild Mage, Street Sweeper. And our rare is Mana Bloom. So X amount of mana, one green, enters the battlefield with X amount of charge counters on it. And we get to remove a charge counter from it and add one mana of any color of mana to our mana pool. You can only use the ability uh, once each turn. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are no charge counters on it, return it to its owner's hands. We have a tip card, we have a swamp, and we have a foil terrace worm, which is pretty cool. So it's just a common, but it's a foil nonetheless. Foils are always awesome. And our last pack here, so we'll see what exactly we have. Alright, so catacomb slug... Launch Party, Rootborn Defenses, Trans Guild Promenade, Dramatic Rescue, Seller of Songbirds, Sewer Shambler, Gore House Chainwalker, Gate Creeper Vine, Azorius Arrester, Aukus Steed, Slitherhead, Golgari Charm, and we have a Chromatic Lantern. So it's a three cost artifact with lands you control, have tapped for any one mana of any color to your mana pool, and the lantern itself taps for one mana of any color to your mana pool as well. Pretty awesome card, especially if you're playing a lot of colors in your deck, like four color, five color decks. Um, it just becomes really, really useful in getting appropriate mana. And then we have a tip card and another land. So putting that off to the side, we are done with this unboxing video here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want to order up any fat packs, there's a link down below to abugames.com where you guys can order them up. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe for more Magic the Gathering content. But until next time, guys, have a wonderful, fun-filled Magic the Gathering day.